Welcome everyone, in this video we are going to look at a projectile motion example but it won't be a projectile motion exactly because there will be acceleration in the horizontal as well so let me draw what I am talking about we will have our surface the level uh, y equals zero and we will be firing a projectile perhaps we are launching a ball at a velocity of v naught, an initial velocity, and at an angle of theta, an initial angle with the horizontal. So, we are given that there is a wind that is blowing at the moment that we uh, launch our projectile, and the wind will be constant. It will be providing an acceleration, an additional acceleration to the acceleration due to gravity we have g downwards and also due to the wind we have a, another acceleration e to the right and its value is g over 3 okay where g is the gravitational acceleration due yeah the acceleration due to gravity basically so we are given this and we are also given in the question, and by the way, the, this is a question from a Turkish physics olympiad. You can access the whole exams paper in the, uh, in the descriptions part. So in the question, we are also told that the, let's say, let's draw the trajectory of our projectile. We are given a relation between h max, the maximum height attained by our projectile, and the range, the distance that it covers on the ground. We are told that, let's see, what are we told? We are told that range is three times the maximum height, h max. This is given in the question and we are asked to find theta, the launching angle. I want to give you a couple of minutes to think about this and so stop the video and when you're ready, Let's do it together. Okay, I hope you stopped the video and are ready now to continue. So first, let's start with finding a formula for H max. We could find a formula for H max. It wouldn't be very hard. I mean, it could be hard, but it wouldn't take us a long time. However, we don't really need to find a formula for H max because notice we have the same motion in the vertical direction. The vertical did not change. The acceleration is still due to gravity. There is not an additional acceleration in the vertical direction. So the H max in this case is going to be the H max without the wind. And in one of my previous videos, I already derived the formula for H max. You can access that video from the cards right now. It is also in the descriptions part. And from that proof, in that video, which I really suggest you watch if you don't know how to derive this formula, we know that H max in a projectile motion, and in this case as well, because as I said, the vertical direction is not affected by the wind, H max is equal to V naught squared sine squared theta divided by G, well, not G, actually 2G. Okay, this is the formula that we have from one of the previous videos and in a previous video i also derived the formula for range but please don't use that formula because that formula was for projectile motion however here we don't really have projectile motion we also have acceleration uh, in the horizontal direction that formula that we derived in a previous video which you can also access from the cards was assuming that there is no acceleration in the horizontal However, that is not the case. So we cannot use that formula. But I mean, how, what can we do? Well, what we can do is we can set our coordinate system such that the initial position is located at 0, 0. Okay, and let's choose our directions like this, x and y. All right. Well, then we know the uh, kinematics equation. We know that delta x is equal to v naught in the x direction times time plus 1 over 2 the acceleration in the x direction times t squared. This is only correct when the acceleration is constant and it is constant for our case. It is just g over 3. 
I also have a video about the derivation of this equation. You can also access that video from the cards and in the descriptions part. So let's just substitute our values for, well, for v naught x and ax and t. Let's go. Also for delta x, it is simply going to be r. And what about v naught x? Well, v naught x is going to be v naught times the horizontal component of our initial velocity. And the horizontal component is this guy. It is going to be the cosine of our angle theta. Plus, we will have 1 over 2 instead of ax. I am going to write g over 3. That was given by the question. g over 3. And oh, I forgot the t here. That's important. We have a t factor here, right? We have a t here and a t squared here. So how can we figure out a formula for t? Well, what is t here? Is it any time? No, it is the time of flight. It is the point, it is the time when the object hits the ground. So, so, I know that if I consider the, well, I mean, let's see, let's consider the vertical direction. We can say then vy is equal to v naught y plus a y t. And if I concentrate on the final time so that I get the time of flight, I will say time of flight, the acceleration due to gravity will be our acceleration. Negative is important. We will have v naught sine of theta for the initial component of uh, velocity in the y direction. And v naught y, I mean v y, is going to be just the opposite of uh, the initial velocity in the y due to the conservation of energy. We could go to a lot of detail about this, but I don't really want to take time. And I am sure that you can figure it out on your own. If you can't, write it in the comment section and I can do a video about it. So from this equation, we can see that Tf is going to be, past this guy to this side, you have 2, uh, you have negative 2 v naught sine theta, but it cancels with the negative here. So you just have a positive value, which is great. We want to have a positive value for our time values. So we got this and now we can substitute for t final. Because notice, we only have some constants and theta. And we are happy with theta because that is what we're trying to find at the end, right? Don't forget what we're trying to do. So if I substitute this to our range formula, I am going to get v naught cosine of theta, uh, tf is 2 v naught sine of theta divided by g plus 1 over 2 g divided by 3, and tf is going to be, and it is squared, so 4 v naught squared sine squared theta divided by g squared. We see that, <coughs> sorry, we see that this 2 and this 4 simplify and one of the g's is cancelled. That's nice. So we are actually very close to the end of it. We will just, we will just equate these two. We won't actually equate them obviously because there is a factor of 3 as we can see. We will account for that and then equate. So let me write it on the new, uh, on the new page. We will have r. So let me copy r. We have two. Let's see, v naught, another v naught. So v naught squared, v naught squared, sine theta, cosine theta, divided by g. I believe, right? Is it like that? It is. That was the first term. Then the second term is. We have a plus, um, let's see, no, let me check, 2 over 3, okay, 2 over 3, and then v naught, okay, got it, v naught squared sine squared theta divided by g. This is going to be equal to, it was given by the question that this is equal to 3 times the h max. We will have 3 then, 3 is right here. And what is h max? Well, it is simply this guy. It is the regular formula for 
the maximum height in a projectile because as i said the vertical motion is not affected by the wind because the wind is only horizontal v not square sine square theta and then divide by 2g great so what do we notice here we notice that g is cancelled these are gone what does this mean it means that the uh, the planet that we are doing this on does not matter. If we were to do this on the moon, we would get the same result, provided that somehow there is a wind blowing. And of course, there is, a, there is not an atmosphere, so I don't really think that that is possible. But you get the idea. The value of the gravitational acceleration does not matter. It cancels. Also, the initial velocity cancels. It's squared cancels. And this means that if we were to launch the ball at a higher speed or, or at a lower speed, we would still be able to get the same result. And notice, we are only left with a bunch of numbers, some trigonometric functions, and just theta. So we might be able to solve for theta. Great, we are really doing fine. I want to multiply both sides by 3, so that I get rid of this guy. And then I will have 6 sine of theta, cosine of theta. Well, then a plus 2 sine squared theta is equal to 9 sine squared theta. Great. Here I want to divide both sides by sine of theta. And can I do that? Maybe sine of theta equals 0. It can equal 0. But in our case, it won't because sine is equal to uh, 0 for angles 0 and 180 degrees. Well, we don't throw it horizontally. The ball is not thrown horizontally. So in our case, sine of theta does not equal 0. We can uh, divide by it. So sine of theta is gone. Some of, uh, some of them are gone, not all of them. And when we do this, we have 6 cosine of theta is equal to... And oh, I made a... Wow, that's a huge mistake. Hold on a second. Why did we forget this two here? No, we didn't forget it. Why did we forget it? That was a big mistake. I'm sorry for that. So we should divide it by two as well. Okay, that was really uh, bad, but it is great that we catch it early. So we have... Well, we will subtract two from nine over two. So we will get... We will get 5 over 2, I believe. Yes. And the sine of theta. Right. Sine of theta. And then I want to... Well, let's just have all thetas on one side. So if I multiply by this... Well, if I divide by 5 over 2, I will have 12 over 5. Right. It is reversed. And if I divide by cosine of theta, I will have tangent of theta. Okay. Now, how can I solve for theta? Well, I can solve for it by taking the inverse uh, tangent of both sides. So if I do that, I will get the result that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 12 over 5. And this is actually the answer to our question. On the exam that it that the students took, this uh, this wasn't provided in the uh, choices. It was choice A, but the choice A said neither of the following. So the students wouldn't be able to sure. Wouldn't they wouldn't be able to be sure whether or not they got it right because there were five choices. Four of them had uh, some things that looked like this, but the correct answer said it is neither of them. Well, it was neither because it is this guy. I hope this video made sense and you enjoyed and learned something. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.